You read the title, let's start with the beat. I will create an audio channel. You can also use a drum sequencer, but the advantage of using an audio channel is that you can thoroughly manipulate every single sound effect that you use, like dynamic pitching, panning, automation, and stretching. This minimal kick sample has too much bass that goes for too long. Percussion is percussion and bass is bass. People who are listening to your song must be able to distinguish between bass and percussion. So, to remove some unwanted bass, you could squish the sample so it lasts for a much shorter time. You can also apply filters and EQ to remove more of the bass frequencies, but I think that is overkill for what we are working with. I will copy and paste the sample to form a simple little beat. You can make the beat as complex as you want, but I'll keep it simple for this demonstration. In fact, my latest song uses this exact beat throughout almost the entire song. Link to that in the description if you care anyway. Let's add more to the beat. I'll add a monster kick and a snare. The snare should come after every other minimal kick. The monster kick will add more punch to the beat. I added a little bit of distortion to make the beats more punchy. Here is another audio channel. In this one, I will add a monster kick. I will reverse the sample and put it before every two beats. Add distortion, flanger, and crazy effects to make it wobble a little. And to make it wobble more, I'll automate the panning. Tap this panning slider and at the very top of the bottom menu dock, press Ctrl and add automation track. When this sample plays, I will make the panning automation go cray cray. This will make the sound go wobble wobble between each ear. It just makes the beat more interesting to listen. Also, it sounds cool. Okay, I'm going to add another audio channel. I will load a beat with a different monster kick sample. Add heavy distortion and reverb to this bad boy. This is what makes the beat shine through. I know it sounds bad right now, but after mixing it, it's going to be golden. Okay, now for the bass. The bass is what completes the soundtrack, or whatever we're making. It's going to be the filler in this mix. I will add a new channel and select the GM synth. You can select whatever preset you like, I will choose the punchy preset. Before I add any effects on it, let's work on the bass line. Okay, done. Now add a ton of distortion on that sucker. Add other effects of your choice to make the bass more wide and thick. Let's have a listen. Remember what I said about distinguishing between percussion and bass? Let's apply that. Let's add automation on the volume. Just like automation with the panning, tap on the volume slider and add automation. You always tap on what you want to automate to select what you want to automate. Anyways, at the beginning of each beat, the volume of the bass will instantly drop and will gradually rise back up to where it was. Loop that automation throughout the whole section. Now the bass and percussion is a little more distinguishable. <laughs>
Before working on any other instruments, let's start adding chords. I'll make another channel for those and we'll use a closed grand sample. Ah, the classic. Chords are multiple notes playing at once that harmonize with each other. You can search for chord progressions online. I created mine by ear. I don't even know how my music sounds so good that you asked me to make a tutorial, honestly. <laughs> Okay, now that we have our chords, let's put in other instruments to really spice things up. I will start with the lead. This will be the main instrument that will be playing the main melody. The padding should be in the middle. That's important. I'll use this GM synth preset for the lead. The reason why I added the chords first was because you can use it to make your own melody. You can follow the notes of the chords to use in your instruments, and it will still sound good. Oh, and use solo. The ghost notes of the instruments that are active will appear lighter. Add effects and filters of your choice. This preset had a lot of reverb, so I went to the effects tab to tone it down. The X axis represents the intensity of the effect. Not sure about the Y axis. See, I'm not an expert. There's our lead instrument. <laughs> Around the second half of the section, I will add another instrument that will harmonize with the lead instrument. Again, follow the notes of the chords like the lead, but distinguish it from the lead instrument. I used a sample and applied these effects on it. For example, I used reverb to create contrast of the bass. The bass is all up on your face, whereas this recessive instrument sounds a little more distant. <laughs> There we go, almost done. Now to spice up our mix even more, let's add white noise. You can do this by opening up a new GM synth, no need to select a preset, go into this tab and putting the noise slider all the way up. You can see that it sounds the same no matter which note you press. I will pick a random note. Again, it sounds the same no matter which key you press and extend it to the end. By adding a volume automation on it, you can create some cool riser and impact effects. Now, to top this off, I'm going to add another audio channel. I'm going to use a simple sample and use some distortion. Crank up the bit crush a bit, and you get a retro style booming sound. There we go. Now you can mix it up, add more instruments to harmonize with the chords, apply more effects and automation, do whatever. Here's the finished product. Guess what? For watching this entire tutorial, I will provide the download of this project in the description for you.